Yeah, for now, what the request is for the government and the global organization, uh, human rights activists, to come together with integrated effort to face uh, climate change and to understand the challenge that we are facing. To, uh, to understand the challenges that the elderly persons are facing and to come up with strategies, with investments geared toward those efforts. Uh, there are those projects, uh, you know, uh, this discussion with is within the uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So we should see, uh, like, uh, access to clean water and sanitation. Like you can see in some places, someone is 60, 70 years old, 70 years old and they are still going to the river to get water. And then we are facing a stream weather condition, maybe it's a dry, dry seasons. What if that person, an elderly person, it is a night, you don't have water, you cannot cook. What does that mean? You should have initiatives, like in, the, in, the, in some places, there are some places that is, that is possible. There are rivers, they do. Do they have like something like a climate risk insurance fund? What happens, like for example, it's an elderly person, maybe there was an earthquake, maybe there are floods. Their homes were destroyed. Where do they go? How do you start rebuilding a home when you are 60, 70 years old? <laughs>
So Maina, you think that climate change affects our older persons? Like just yesterday, we hear all this northeastern part of Kenya. People are always fighting, there's some arid areas because there's no water, because of livestock crisis. Do you think that affect the older persons? How? Yeah, uh, this, uh, you know, climate change brings all these uh, factors like uh, unpredictable weather conditions, uh, you know, there are prolonged uh, drought system, dry, system uh, dry seasons, which uh, it brings those, uh, like you are saying, the wars and whatever that is happening. And they are more vulnerable to anything that is happening around them. Because they have to carry that weight, they are also not as, as flexible as the younger population. Uh, so there's that case of uh, anxiety, the access to, for example, when they, they were saying about their own, you know, although, although it's not happened, just take the case of an elderly person. They are in a place which they are aware and they know they had heard from the news that they only know are coming. They are aware that they are in a flood risk area and they have no one to take care of them. No one is talking about them. No one is uh, passing policies about how they can maybe, in case of such emergencies, what are the policies, what are the strategies to help them? There are no such policies. I do find most uh, global activists, there is uh, less talk on uh, our concern of the elderly persons. Most time we are dealing with the kids and the upper populations. But when it comes to the elderly persons, there are few people who are concentrating on them. Yeah. So, uh, Maina, like you just talked about El Nino, there's been talked about so much, El Nino is coming and you're telling us such things would affect our older persons. What would have been your expectation in Kenya today if El Nino was coming or it is coming like we were told by the government? What you do you expect? You're talking about strategies specifically on older persons now that it affects them. What would you be your expectation from the government or the people? Yeah, uh, you know, this is not uh, an issue of just the government. It's an issue of uh, even global organization, governments, the community. But I feel like there is a greater need to focus on the unique concerns that uh, affect the elderly persons. For example, when they are, I don't know, how do, will they access health services? There are those that take daily medication. There are those that need regular health checkups. When this kind of uh, cast roof happen. How would they access that? Uh, recently they said they are going to train the, the, these uh, community health workers. They are going to be trained uh, on uh, how to take care of the elderly people. That will be strategic in helping uh, the elderly persons in such scenarios to access their services. There should be more investment in those areas. Yes, it is an expense but it's the right thing to do it's but, the safe right but thing now maina yeah. we have been told money has been set aside the only thing we've heard about preparation is money being set aside you as because you understand what climate change is and its effect on the older person what would have been your expectation what would you do expect to be seeing now happening now that we don't know if the you know is next week or next month what would you do expect to, for them to be doing for the older persons whoever may it be family be it be the government may it be anyone what would you expect to be seeing you know, if you are told the, the rain is coming and I'm yeah. coming to town, I will yeah. bring my umbrella with yeah. me. Yeah. So what would you expect to be seeing now happening on the lives of the older persons as regards the Runino? Even now we are not sure it's not coming. Yeah. We just had money has been set aside. Yeah, that's a case of uh, transparency and governance. The funds has already been released. What activities would you be expecting to For see? For example, we should yeah. be seeing more input, maybe uh, upgrade, upgrading the health facilities are there to be more accommodative to the elderly persons. For example, they can uh, increase the, there's the program for the financial support for the elderly persons. There's the case of inflation. They, were used, they used to be given uh, 4000 per month. That was some times back. And it was not consistent. For example, we find that you are given this month, you have to wait for another Three months. No one is given four months. Who is that? Like uh, there, there are the delays in the release of the 
funds. So the government should channel. They, they already set aside. They already, they already said they said. The money, money is set aside. The money is already set aside. Uh -huh. So it's only uh, if good governance dictates that those funds are will be set aside instead of that being uh, pivoted to other projects. It should be invested in uh, initiatives that uh, care for the elderly. Which are persons. these cares for the elderly? Something tangible that if you tell the lay person, hey, this is as a result of the preparation for Irunino, and that's why I'm asking, what activities do you expect to be seeing? I said, like, if the rains were coming, or uh, a doctor is walking in with expecting to be wearing his coat and said he's ready to work. So, yes, someone, Ernino is coming. What do you expect? What would you be expecting now as far as older persons are concerned? We should see more action in the way government plans before. For example, they started planning when they got the news or the or the data that the Onino was coming. But that should be something that should be planned before. Something that should already be in place. It's like we are reacting to situations instead of acting. You see, when you act to a situation, it's less effective. So if you are to look at the camera and talk to Kenyans and our government, the Onino is coming, climate change is here, and you are pro older persons, what would you tell them would you want to see happening? Yeah, for now what we uh, I would uh, request is for the government and the global organization uh, human rights activists to come together with integrated effort to face uh, climate change and to understand the challenge that we are facing. To, uh, to understand the challenges that the elderly persons are facing and to come up with strategies, with investments geared toward those efforts. Would you give them some of these investments? Maybe they don't even know, but you as an expert, so you are advising somebody out there. For example, we should see more uh, uh, initiatives that are geared to world trainings uh, for elderly care, the resources. They are the resources, the medical requirements for the older persons. We should see that. We should also see like the programs, more programs, the grassroots programs. Like there are those elderly persons, there's someone just in the village. They don't have someone to take care of them. Who in the community, whose authority in the community is said to go and check up on those people? I've seen like uh, in the place I come from, uh, there are those projects, uh, you know, uh, this discussion with is within the uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So we should see, uh, like, uh, access to clean water and sanitation. Like you can see in some places, someone is 60, 70 years old, 70 years old, and they are still going to the river to get water. And then we are facing a stream weather condition, maybe it's a dry, dry season. What if that person, an elderly person, it is a night, you don't have water, you cannot cook? What does that mean? You, you should have initiatives, like in, the, in, the, in some places, there are some places that is, that is possible. There are rivers. You can see initiative to make sure that water is available in every homestead. Did you say, uh, like when even there is floods, how it affects, there's more water body diseases, and the older persons are as, as successful as the children, young kids. Yeah. They are more vulnerable to that. Yeah, they are more, anything, any crisis or any climate change threat that happens, the elderly persons are more vulnerable. For example, there are diseases like uh, uh, chronic or obstructive pulmonary disease, which uh, disproportionately uh, affect the elderly persons. This is like asthma. And, uh, with the current trend in uh, climate change, we only project that they will escalate as time goes. What plans do global organizations and governments do they have in place? When this happens, what do they do? Do they have like something like a climate risk insurance fund? What happens, like for example, it's an elderly person, maybe there was an earthquake, Maybe they are floods. 
their homes were destroyed. Where do they go? How do you start rebuilding a home when you are 60, 70 years old? <laughs> now that you're talking about homes, Dedan, yeah. you just remind me as we talk about planning for El Nino and making sure that people are safe, but we find even demolitions of their homes. In, so what, will, what would happen? I don't know what kind of thinking is that. We, sh we should have more policies. <laughs> they are the policy makers. We should have more. They are, but there are no clear laws indicating how elderly person should be taken care of. We should see more policies on that. Let's say your house was demolished, you are 80 years, what do you do? You know, for a young person like me, I can say after him, I will recover. But for an elderly person, how yeah. do you take care of Where, them? Whatever they have been calling home is demolished. In yeah, it's just you, are, you have taken their, okay. their life, just you have taken <laughs> their life. Now that, as we wind up, now that uh, we are looking forward uh, to coming up with a senior citizen policy. Yeah. And uh, of course, I've seen uh, climate change cannot be left behind because it has a lot it of effects, effects on yeah. them. What would you like to be as far as from the angle of climate change to be included in the senior citizens law? For example, in the case of financial planning, there should be the specific uh, policies that indicate the... No, we are having a policy on senior citizens. Yeah. From your angle of climate change, what would you like to be included in that uh, senior citizens law? Uh, for that... Because of those effects? Because of the effects, we should have some like a, a climate risk insurance fund that will take care of, maybe will give priority to elderly persons. If the risk occurs, Maybe there are floods. Maybe for the younger population, we can say we cannot, maybe we may be able to finance building for them. But for an elderly person, you should be able to provide shelter for them. You should be able to, you know, uh, as the economy has uh, grown the inflation, the life expectancy is higher than in the past. But the quality of life has gone low. The quality of life is not as it was back then. Yeah. The quality of life. There's yeah. the, life the, expectancy is longer, but, but the, the, life quality, the, the quality, the quality of, of life, life yeah. is down. The quality of life is down because you know climate change. We have said is influences and affects every aspect of our lives. Maybe you had even an insurance policy for your health, but there are cases of inflation. You know all these things. You know climate uh, change overstretches the available resources, so there are no. Uh, finances for that. Maybe you had, uh, you had your own financial plan, but you are old. Some things happen, floods, earthquakes, all your money is gone. What do you do after that? So, Deda and Mina, what is your, would be your last, I mean, your last parting shot? Uh, my parting shot is for a call for all global organizations like the World Health Organization, uh, other climate activists, human rights activists, government and policy makers to come together in integrated effort and realize the challenge that is, understand the challenges that we face and understand that the elderly persons are more vulnerable with anything that happens because they understand, they see everything, but they are helpless. So it's only us who can take care of them. They cannot take care of themselves. They need the assistance. And for that, uh, it has to be accelerated by the governments and the global organizations. Because uh, by the individual level, we can say we can uh, do at the community level, we can say you take care of your parents. But sometimes, even ourselves, we don't have those finances. So the government and uh, global organizations, they have to come in and support where they can. Viewers, let us all stand with our older persons. My voice, your voice, our voices are the voices of the voiceless. Sote, tuanjibike, tutunze, wakongwe.